Well, hello and welcome back again. Um, today I'm going to talk about Card Master, which is a uh, really interesting uh, game. Came out in the early '90s, '93, I think it was. It's uh, lets you play D and D solo, sort of. Um, it's uh, comes with all these cards. Obviously, it's got uh, the monster deck, treasure deck, a location deck, and each of the card decks have. Uh, you know, various artwork on them, like the various locations, have rooms, corridors, various art within those rooms and corridors, uh, treasure deck, a variety of different treasures. Um, here's just jewels. Uh, this is a wisdom thing that a rogue can use. Boots of levitation. Uh, room of flight. So it's just a variety of different treasures. And, of course, the monster deck, as you would expect, there's vampires, trolls, traps. There's also traps in the treasure deck. There's actually more traps in the treasure deck than there are the monster deck. Uh, ogres, saber-toothed tigers, umber hulks. And how this works is you see that uh, um, the uh, monsters have like a, a different color, red, green, or blue. Green being uh, third level, blue being fourth, and red being fifth. Uh, and, uh, and of course, corresponds with the corridors and rooms and the treasures as well. Uh, treasures are over here. Treasures as well. Um, here I just picked up one actually that doesn't have a color. Is it on colored? Meaning it can happen at any level. It doesn't have to be at a red, green, or blue level. But most of the treasures are actually color coded. But like the trap, that can happen no matter what. So, so gameplay is actually pretty simple. Uh, and uh, it actually comes with some scenarios uh, built in to it. Obviously, I've got my three-hole punching going on here. This product did not come with three-hole punching. I went on a three-hole punching craze when I was much younger, and this did not miss the excitement of being three-hole punched. So anyway... Um, there's a whole few different scenarios you can make up your own. Uh, what we're going to just kind of go through here is just kind of uh, not a real, um, so it, one of the real scenarios, just kind of uh, just something to, to demonstrate with. Uh, there's an attack table. Warriors get to use a D10. Clerics a D8. Rogues a D6. Wizards a D4. Monsters a D8. And no matter what, they will always hit on 7, 8, 9, 10, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 4, 6, 7, 8. Just like it shows there. Uh, spell potency table. Uh, you can roll one die per level of caster. And uh, so if it's a first level spell, they roll d6s. So if it's the third level caster rolling um, a first level spell, they get to roll three d6s. With the second level spell, that same caster would roll uh, 3d8s and so forth. Uh, the only two spells that uh, exist in this game, for the cleric, there's a healing spell. And for the wizard, there's basically a magic missile spell. And they only have a couple three spells, so they don't really have a ton of spells. Uh, mostly they're going to be relying upon combat to resolve everything. You check the spell, the wizard spell, for example, first level, they have one spell. Second level, they have two first level spells. Third level, they have two first and a second. Um, whereas the rogue would have uh, kind of the same thing. They have first. I'm, I'm The cleric would have a uh, one first, two second, two first, and a second at third level. And it just kind of goes up from there. Uh, and how these work out. So, for example, this cleric here, she would have had uh, two firsts and a second, meaning she could cast that heal spell uh, three times, uh, twice at first level rolling d6s, and once at second level rolling a d8. Uh, so that's really the only uh, thing there. Uh, the cleric can only cast spells uh, out of combat, and the wizard can only cast spells in combat. And once again, the wizard can only basically cast Magic Missile. And the cleric is basically casting Cure Light Wounds. So how the game is played. And it's pretty, very simple gameplay. Uh, 
And I'm just going to write down, we have our rogue. He has 10 hit points. And we have our cleric with 11 hit points. And for here, we basically ignore armor class and FACO, unless you want to actually use uh, second edition rules. This is actually technically a second edition product, although it's only a second edition product if you actually want to use second, second edition rules. Otherwise, just for a solo, a solo type gameplay, if it's just yourself or maybe yourself and one other person, and nobody wants to be the DM, you can just kind of make up a little scenario as you go here. The scenario I'm going to make up here, I'm going to say that the uh, uh, they're just trying to kind of explore the entrance of a dungeon. They're going to explore like five rooms and then leave uh, no matter what. You know, they'll probably find some treasure. They're definitely going to encounter some monsters. So basically all we do here is we're going to start with one of the corridors. Uh, you can start with a green, blue, or red corridor. Uh, and that really doesn't doesn't impact a ton of, of the gameplay but uh, of course green is the is the first corridor and that's the easiest corridor so that's where our guys are starting out at you don't need any tokens any minis there are some larger cards that come two larger cards a large corridor and a large um, hall card that uh, you can actually take some of the set design pieces that come out and kind of decorate it up and if you were trying to, uh, you know, maybe use it for us as part of an ongoing uh, battle map or campaign, but I have them somewhere, but I couldn't locate them. I haven't, I, I don't use them if I play the game. So, and for whatever reason, they were not in the uh, the uh, material here. So, but our guys came in the green door. The only option is to leave by a green door. And so they will leave by that green door. So they're going to turn location cards because we know we have to hit a green door. We're looking for a green door. We're going to turn up to three cards. As soon as we find a green door, we'll stop turning cards. If we don't find a green door by the third card, the third card is our new room, even if it's a red. So it could be blue, red, whatever. Whatever that third one is, it's that's where we stop. Unless we find a green before then, because we're looking for a green. So we're going to turn our first card. That's a blue. So we're going to turn our second card. And that's a green. Um, and we were looking for, once again, a green door. So this is a green room, because it's got a green circle. This particular green circle has a monster in it. Like the entry hall did not have a monster in it, um, which means there could be a monster, but probably not. The green with a monster circle means there's always a monster. Uh, but we're looking for a green monster. If we don't find a green monster, we'll go with whatever monster that we draw. And it's the same as the rooms here. We're looking for the third card. If we, if we When we stop at the third card, no matter what, that's the monster. Unless we find a green monster before then. So if this first card I turn over is a green card, then that's the monster we're going to fight. If it's not a green card, then we'll turn over another card. In this case, it's a blue card. It's a five-headed hydra. That's not a green one. We'll turn our second one. We found the acid trap. Uh, the acid trap uh, is a special thing there. Traps are... Okay, that's an acid trap. Um, acid traps are um, cause they are, are co colorless, so they're going to attack no matter what level they fall on. Uh, in this case, it actually fell on the screen one. It doesn't matter because it's colorless, and it came up, so it, it's going to do to a trigger. We're going to roll four eight-sided dice, uh, and on a six, seven, or eight, that... Uh, we're gonna go. We're, we're actually gonna, gonna take damage, but because we have the rogue with us, we can try to uh, mitigate that a little bit. So the rogue is gonna uh, roll a number of six-sided dice equal to his level. So he's a fourth-level rogue. So he's gonna roll four 
six-sided dice. And he's going to try to disarm this trap. Uh, so on a roll of a six, seven, or eight, so he managed to disarm one leg of, the, of, of that trap. So a rogue can try to disarm a trap before it attacks. The player rolls a number of six-sided dice equal to the rogue's level. If any die rolls a six, the trap is disarmed and has no effect. One of the device is a six, the trap goes off. So the rogue rolled a six, so we are good. Uh, the trap did not do any damage. Had the rogue not rolled that six, I would have had to have rolled four eight-sided dice against both the rogue and the cleric. So they both would have taken damage. Um, but because the rogue actually was trying to disarm it, and if he had not rolled that six, he would have been the only one actually to take the damage. Um, but uh, if he had tried to disarm it, or if he had not rolled that six, then, then there would have been damage. But because he rolled a six, there was no damage. And now they get to decide, uh, and that was the the uh, creature for the room. There's no treasure in this case. We just get to decide what to leave. Well, our only choice is a green door again. So we are going to draw uh, the location card. Okay, then I'm looking for a green. First card. Second card, no matter what this card is, that's the room we're going into. Okay, and it happens to be a red card with a monster. So we're going to draw again here, looking for a red card with a monster. First card I draw turned over is two wraiths. That two means that there's two, two of them, and they are wraiths. Uh, the big thing here is that five hit dice. Uh, the other thing to note is there's definitely going to be treasure of some sort. So, uh, first thing to do is to figure out who's going to go first. Uh, I'm going to say the red dice is the monster, the black dice is the party, and you can roll any dice, flip coin, whatever, it doesn't really matter. In this case, the red dice was the monster. I rolled a five on the red and two on the black, so the red's going to go first. That means the monster's going to make his attack first. I'm going to say the rogue was probably in front, you know, doing his little rogue stuff, checking for traps or false pit traps or you know, listening and all that kind of roguish type stuff. So he's going to be the one that's attacked. Now, he's going to attack with five eight-sided dice, because he's uh, hit dice is five. That's also, coincidentally, how many hit points he has. We're going to write a five there. And he gets to attack with five eight-sided dice. So I'm going to roll three, and then I'm going to roll two more. All right. So the little table here shows a monster rolls d8s, and they hit on six, seven, or eight. Okay, there's one seven he's going to hit with. Now he has to roll two more. And he missed on both those. He's actually going to be going, we're only going to do one point of damage to the rogue. So the rogue took one point of damage from that wraith. And now the rogue gets to return the attack. Now the rogue uses the d6, and he'll hit on a four and a, or, I'm sorry, he'll hit on a five or a six. Uh, so you get a fourth level rogue, he gets four dice. He rolls them out. He rolled two fives. The three and the four don't hit. So five minus two is three. Now the cleric also gets to make an attack. And remember, she can't cast any spells in combat. She can cast healing out of combat. So even if she wanted to, she couldn't heal the rogue right now. But what she can do is make an attack. And the uh, cleric actually uses the D8. She's a third level, so she's going to use 3D8. And she is going to on uh, a 6, 7, or 8 hit. So she hit with one of her dice. So she's got a two. Two hit points left. Uh, the wraith uh, gets to go again. It gets all of its dice, even though it's taken some damage. It still gets to use all of its dice. So it rolled a six and an eight, that's two hits. And the fives don't hit. So this, the uh, six and the eight, that's two more hits that the rogue just took. Rogue is starting to get a little bit ouched. Um, 
And then, yeah, you just continue that way. Now we go back to the Rogue and the Cleric are going to go ahead and make their attacks. They're probably this time going to be successful, we hope. Uh, four, five, and six is what the, or, I'm sorry, five and six is what the Rogue hits on. You got two fives, so he finishes the uh, Wraith. Wraith is now dead. Uh, now, the Rogue does not immediately heal those hit points. The Cleric has to heal him, or it might find a potion, or something else that would that, that would enable him to heal. There's a fountain um, in one of the rooms that will let you heal. But uh, this uh, Wraith has a treasure, guaranteed. So we're going to turn treasure over until we find it. Once again, it's just like the um, location of monster. If you turn three of them over and you haven't matched the color, the third one is what it is. So this time we're looking for a red treasure. First time we turn over, it's a green amulet. That's not what we found. Second one is a green horn of fog. That's not what we found. So no matter what this is, even if it's another green card, this is it because it's the third card. It happens to be that it's a red one. Um, it, it wouldn't have mattered if, if it was red, blue, or green. It would have still been the one we got. It's the Boots of Speed, though, which is pretty good for the Rogue. It's actually usable by all classes, but what it does is let you attack twice on the first round of combat. And, of course, can only be used once per battle. But the Rogue is going to go ahead and claim those Boots of Speed. So now he'll be able to attack not once, he'll be able to attack twice on the next combat. And these two treasures were not used, so we'll just go ahead and put them at the bottom of the deck. Or wherever your discard pile is, you make up your own discard pile. Okay, we came in uh, to this room. Now we can choose to leave by a, it's a red room, we can choose to leave by the green door, or we can choose to leave, to leave by the red door. What we cannot do is go back at all because per the rules heroes only go forwards so we can't just go to decide oh, i'm going to go backwards you just don't you, you can't do that you just so decide i'm going to go red or green and if you were trying to be really uh strict you could say well i came in on the red i can only go out the green it's your game you decide what you want to do but i'm going to say they're looking for a green one and you got to call it in advance uh so that's not green this one is green. Now it does not show a monster. We still have to check to see if there's a monster. We'll turn over one monster card. And if the monster card happens to match the color, then there, yes, there was a monster in the room. Otherwise, there was not. We don't draw three or anything. We're just going to draw the one monster card. It's a red. This is green. There was no monster. So we're going to go ahead to the next room. And we have our, our only choice is green. So that's a red. Card two is blue. Card three, no matter what this card is. In this case, it worked out that it was green. We're going to check for a monster again. There is a monster in this room. There's three skeletons. So each of them have one hit point. So the, but they each get a one attack. And the, here's the thing, too, is if the rogue hits, rolls his four dice, he, he does four damage. It only applies to one monster. He can't say, oh, I applied that one, that one, that one. Uh, the whole attack only goes to one one creature. So we'll roll to see who goes first. We'll say the blue is for the skeletons, the black is for the party. Party's going to go first. Now the rogue has those boots of speed on, so this might all be over and pretty quick here. Looking for fives or sixes. Okay, well, they didn't get a five or a six in that whole pile there, but he does have those boots of speed. He does get to attack again. He still missed completely, uh, which means that the cleric can try to pick up the uh, slack there. Uh, she does hit one of them with that seven, so that tucks out, takes out one of those skeletons. But there are two skeletons left to attack. Now, each skeleton only gets one D8 because they only have one hit dice. And, of course, monsters hit on a six, seven, or eight. So, um, this one's going to go after the rogue. The second one's going to go after the cleric. Rogue misses. The, and the one going after the cleric misses. Now we're back to the rogue. He does not get to use those boots again because he already used them. Uh, and the rogue once again hits on a five or a six. So he rolled a five. So he did do the second one there. And then she is going to miss again. 
That last skeleton is going to go after the rogue and miss. The rogue is going to return and miss. And, oh, she does hit with that eight. So the skeletons are all dead now. Uh, they did not have any treasure. That little line there, there's no treasure for them. So no treasure at all. And that's kind of a quick little run through of how the the game is played. We would continue going. They would keep turning cards, you know, until you met whatever objective. Maybe you wanted to kill X number of creatures, uh, collect X number of treasures, and whatever it was you were trying to do when you reach that objective. Like I said at the beginning, we're going to visit a certain number of rooms. You know, whatever that is, then uh, the party can then leave, and then you can, you know however you want to tally it up for your next game. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, do the YouTube thing, the bell, subscribe, like, and all that kind of stuff. So thanks. Bye.